Hey guys, in this video, I wanna give you the 14 most impactful success principles that I got out of the movie, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind. Now, if you're not familiar with the movie, it's on Netflix and it's one of the best movies that I've seen in a long time. So if you haven't seen it, that I highly recommend that you go and watch it. And spoiler alert, I am going to tell you some of the plot in this video. So if you're worried about that, then you might want to stop the video and then uh, go watch the actual movie first and then come back. So in this movie, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, which is based on a true story, by the way, um, there is a young boy who's, uh, I think, about 13 years old, who lives in a small village in Africa, very, very poor, very little resources. They don't have um, electricity. They don't have running water. And then something happens that the village goes into a famine and there's not enough food to go around. And the movie is all about... It's, it's kind of about the boy and his father are trying to desperately save the family from this horrible situation. And so kind of a big theme of the movie is the, the boy's um, approach to saving the family versus the father's approach. And so everything that the boy does is effective. Everything the father does is ineffective. And so the contrast between the two approaches is really, really good. And I really loved the way that this was portrayed because it's so true in any area of your life. If you'd like to be successful in just about anything, then following this boy's example uh, is, going to, is going to work like in just about anything that you want to do. Um, and following the father's example is probably not going to work. So I'm going to go over each of these 14 success principles and try to think, um, as you're listening to this, try to think how you can apply each one of these principles in your own life, right? And, and a big part of this movie that I thought was really cool is that this boy is, um, manages to save his family from famine with very, very little resources, right? He is extremely poor. They barely have any stuff to operate on. Um, and, and you'll see if you watch the movie that it's really awesome illustration of the fact that where there's a will, there's a way. So if this boy can do it, then, you know, whatever you're facing in your life, if you're watching this in a comfortable house on the internet, like you, you can do it too. Absolutely. Now, the first principle is use leverage. That is work smarter, not harder. When you think about um, the father's approach, was he's desperately trying to dig in the ground and trying to plant crops during the dry season using his own sweat and his own muscles uh, in a way that's, that's basically guaranteed to fail. Whereas the boy, instead of trying to, to force something, he uses leverage. So he creates a machine, right, in the first place. He creates this windmill that's going to um, spread water to the crops, to the land, instead of just trying to use human effort, right? He's using the leverage that a machine provides. In another part, when he's actually building the windmill, you see that he gets the whole, the whole village involved and it's a team effort. So he's using the other people around him as leverage rather than trying to do it all himself. So that's success principle number one, use leverage. Success principle number two is also work hard. Right, you, the best combination is to work smart and work hard. If you have leverage that can, let's say, can multiply your personal work or your personal output by a hundred times, well, if you put in a little bit of work and multiply it a hundred times, well, that's pretty good. But if you put in a lot of work and, and multiply that a hundred times, then that's even better. Right, so even though this boy was working smart, he also worked really, really hard. Right, he was putting himself through school. Um, he was had this uh, business where he was repairing electronics on the side. He was helping his family at home, and he was building this windmill. Right, and and doing it, cramming this all in together. Like he worked really, really hard as well as working smart. So that's principle number two: is work hard also. Now principle number three is conviction equals influence. Right, the and this is. If you want to influence people, the more personally convicted you are yourself, the more likely you are to influence the person. Whereas if you're not totally sure of something, it's less likely to, um, to influence them, right? Because people can sense 
your level of conviction. Like they can sense how, how much you believe in something. It's something that people find in sales all the time, that you can be a crappy salesman, but if you really believe in something, then you, you'll be pretty good at selling it, even if you don't know any of the techniques. Whereas somebody that has all the techniques but does not have a convic the conviction, does not really believe in the product, is not going to be as good a salesman. Um, so in the, in the movie, the boy was able to convince his family and his village that the plan would work and and he really i mean really had to convince them because for example his his father had to give up his bicycle his only bicycle which was worth its weight in gold to them right because they didn't have any other method of transportation he was willing to give up his bicycle in order to make this work right and so it was the boy's absolute faith it's absolute conviction that this would work that made him able to convince everybody to support him and to join the effort, even at the, the um, cost of a great personal sacrifice. So that's success principle three, conviction equals influence. Uh, success principle number four, true education is power. True education. And, and notice that the education that I'm talking about was learning to do the thing and he needed to do in order to solve the problem that he was looking to solve, right? He didn't learn how to do this in school, although, I mean, school was somewhat helpful, taught him to read and such, but he learned because he found a book on the subject that he needed to know, right? He learned engineering in order to create a this windmill, right, where he could just as well have, have learned about, like, oppression ideology, about how unfair the world is, like, which is pretty much what all of American colleges are teaching now, right? I mean, it, it, for him especially, because he was oppressed, like, he, he was in a horrible situation because of government corruption and because of all this terrible stuff. He could have could have been angry at the world and angry at God because life is so unfair, and he would have been justified in that. But the fact is, he chose not to do that. He chose to get a true education in something that was actually helpful to him and the people around him. Principle number five is take responsibility on yourself. Right, again, you know, people could have complained because the government was corrupt, there, there was a lot of unfairness, and actually that's what the father did, right? He went and, and protested the government. That, that was his attempt to solve this situation, right? And what ended up happening is because he was away, um, even the little bit of, of food that he had was stolen because he wasn't there to protect his own household, right? It was, it was stolen from his wife and his daughter. Uh, because he was off, off um, protesting the government, which did nothing, right? So you can protest, you can beg, you can wait for handouts, right? But almost all the time, that's going to get you nowhere. And, and even if you get a tiny little bit of pity concession from the government, it's going to be something really, really tiny. Whereas if you just own the situation, you take responsibility for it yourself, even if it's not your fault, you still take responsibility for it yourself, then you can create a much, much better solution than you're ever going to get by begging somebody else or begging the government. Principle number six is plan ahead. Right? Plan ahead what you're going to do. Um, the one thing that the boy did that was really, really smart is when he, the government was giving out just a little bit of grain, he recognized that there are going to be a whole bunch of people fighting over this little bit of grain. So before he went into the warehouse to get the grain, he looked around the perimeter of the warehouse for a way to escape. Right, And sure enough, when he went into the warehouse, um, he couldn't like they couldn't get out the front door because there was an angry mob of people that wanted to steal it. So he was able to um, find a weakness, like a structural weakness in the building and get out the back. And so he escaped alive with the grain without anybody stealing it. So that's uh, number six is plan ahead. Seven is be good to the people around you. Be good to the people around you because all of them are potential allies. So you might have noticed in the movie that it wasn't just him that built this windmill, right? He built the prototype, he planned it, he was the, the executive in charge of the whole thing, but in the end, it was the whole village that helped him, right? And, and including both Christians and Muslims. You see that throughout the movie, that the Christians and Muslims um, aren't fighting each other, they're working together, right? Whereas if they were starving, 
probably they would have separated into tribes and, and fought each other for the little bit of food. But um, because they were willing to work together and see each other as allies, then they managed to solve the problem in a much, much better way. And so this is also really cool that he was working together with people because if he wasn't, then chances are great that if he, like, I mean, if he managed to grow some food for himself, then the other villagers would have just robbed him, right? So he included them, he worked together, he treated them as allies instead of as opponents. Principle number eight is keep your eyes on the prize and have faith, right? This, this boy kept on going even though everybody doubted him, right? Even though his own father kicked over his, his prototype windmill and said, it's, it's, you're wasting your time, it's not going to work, right? So even in the face of all of these doubters and all of these naysayers in this really horrible situation, he just kept going because he kept laser focused on what he wanted to accomplish, right? And if you will do that, that will help you in every area of your life. You will just keep going straight instead of doubting yourself, instead of turning around, instead of looking down, instead of looking in all other directions ahead of, a, instead of right ahead. That is what gets you what you want in life. And so if you can ignore the naysayers, ignore all the negativity around you, and keep focused on what you want, then the ways to achieve what you want will eventually make themselves known, right? And so that was really interesting in, in, this movie in particular because there was so little resources, right? He had so little, yet the resources that he needed were there. And once, it, because he had this straight ahead attention, because he had this faith, he was able to identify them when he saw them. Principle number nine, ask for help, right? A lot of us have a hard time of this. We feel like we have to do everything on our, on our own, but use the experience and the knowledge and the resources that other people have, right? So the boy, he was, he, well, the father, for one thing, didn't really ask anybody for help. He went and protested the government, which isn't exactly asking, it's more like demanding. But anyway, the, the boy, he, he asked help from a lot of people, right? He asked for help from his teacher, uh, from the librarian at the school, he got help from his principal, he got help from his friends, and eventually he got help from his father. Right, so he couldn't have done it alone, but he was able to do it because he was willing to ask for help. And chances are, whatever you're trying to do in your life, there's somebody that could help you, that could make it easier for you, that could share some knowledge or some experience that could push you to the next level. Success principle number 10 is be resourceful. Everything that you need is available. Have that faith that everything that you need is available, you just need to find it around you, right? Chances are, wherever you are, you probably have a lot more resources at your disposal than this boy did, but he was able to use the, the tiny little bit of resources that he had to accomplish his goal. And you can do the same thing. Be creative with your resources and you will find a way. Next success principle number 11 is take risk and make sacrifices. This is one of the hard ones, right? This is one of the difficult ones for people. Um, I mean, if you think about the, the family invested a very, they only had a tiny little bit of money. They were barely getting by, and yet they were able to raise a little bit of money for their son's education, right? That is so important. If, if you invest in knowledge, that is the, by far the best investment you could ever make. Even though most of us are, are, are scared, right? Like we were operating out of fear and we just want to hold on to whatever little tiny bit of money we have in case some sort of emergency happens instead of investing it. And if you think about what would have happened to the family, if they had invested in just a little bit of extra food instead of investing in education, that little bit of extra food would have been robbed, right? It would have been gone anyway. But education is something that cannot be robbed. That's something that you have forever. And again, I'm talking about true education, education that's, not, that's actually helpful. I'm not a, talking about college education or useless education. Um, and then they even took it like a, a, well, a really a big step further and they destroyed the father's bicycle, the, the family's only bicycle, their only means of transportation besides walking. They were willing to destroy in order to create this windmill. Right, that is a huge, 
personal sacrifice, but they were willing to make it, right? And so the people that have success in all areas of, of life are the people that are willing to make sacrifices. It, it actually reminds me of an interesting statistic I heard from Dan Kennedy, who is a, a big shot marketing guy. He, like, he works with a lot of successful entrepreneurs. And he said, the, of all of the entrepreneurs that he's met, like the number one factor that they all have in common, like the number one thing that, that they all had in common was that they've all gone bankrupt. <laughs> which is not what I was thinking at all, right? That's not what I was expecting him to say. But it makes sense if you think about it because the people that go bankrupt are the people that were willing to take a risk, right? They were willing to bet it all on an idea. And the fact is that people who bet it all on an idea, oftentimes they bet wrong, right? Oftentimes it, it doesn't work out, but... Um, the times that it does work out make up for the times that it doesn't work out many, many times over. So you find that some of the most successful people in the world have gone bankrupt, have gone through very difficult times because they were willing to face their fear and make that difficult sacrifice. Okay, success principle number 12, keep pushing until you cross the finish line. If you notice with the boy in the movie, Everything was against him, right? All of the circumstances were against him. He ran out of money and he got kicked out of school. Um, his family got robbed. His sister ran away. Uh, he, it, like his father didn't support him. Everything was against him. And yet he kept pushing on, even in spite of all the difficulties. There were so many times that he could have given up and, and nobody would have blamed him. Right, that scene where his father kicks over his windmill and says, "Go, you know, go help me work in the field." Almost anybody would have given up in that situation, but he didn't. He pressed on, and that pushing on was necessary for him to eventually be successful. Principle number thirteen is solve big problems, get big rewards. Now, your family in your village being on the brink of dying of hunger—that is a big problem. <laughs> Right? That is a really, really big problem, and he was able to solve that problem. So, obviously, the whole village absolutely loved him. He was the, I'm sure he was the most popular person in that village for a long time. They probably made statues to him in that village. Right? And apart from just being loved, he, as a result of this, he is now internationally famous. Um, he is working for, for Dartmouth, for IDEO. He has been a, a major success, even by our Western standards now. He's making a lot of money because of this. So if you solve a big problem, chances are you're going to get a big reward. Now, you can contrast this to where he was before, right? He was fixing radios. Um, and so fixing radios is solving a very small problem. And so people liked him for it, like he was popular. He made a little bit of money doing it. But solving the big problems got him a much bigger reward than solving the small problems. And then finally, the last success principle is think longer term, right? Think longer term. This is something I have to remind myself all, uh, of all the time. But you notice this is another thing where you can contrast the, the father's perspective versus the son's perspective. The father is, is thinking short term. He's like desperately trying to dig in the ground, trying to plant the crops, even though it's probably not going to work. Um, he's thinking like he wants something now or he's going to go protest the government because maybe they'll take pity on him now. Whereas the boy, he was thinking long term. This was a big plan. Like he had to put a lot of work and a lot of thought into it. He had to go read the, because he didn't even know how to build a windmill, right? He had to go go into the library. He, well, he, he wasn't even allowed in the library. He had to like sneak into the library after hours and uh, find a book that would be helpful. He had to learn this stuff. He had to build this prototype. He had, to, and then he had to, to build the full thing. Um, like there were all these steps along the way. It took a long time to build this solution. And along that whole time, there was no difference in the amount of food, right? Nothing that he did created any food until it was all finished. And so this is something that a lot of people have a really, really hard time with, especially when you're starting business or doing something like that, or even uh, learning a new skill set to get into a, a higher level career, is that you have to put in work for quite a while before you ever see any payoff. 
to that work. But if you're able to do that, then the payoff that you get is much, much bigger than if you were just focused in the short term and just working more hours at your crappy job or whatever you could do, to, or driving Uber in, in your meantime, just to be able to make a little bit of extra money, right? If you're thinking short term, you, yeah, you make a little bit more, you, you can get a little bit better results, but if you think long term, you can get much, much, much exponentially better results. So that's it, that's the 14 principles. If you came up with some other principles or if you have any comments, I'd love to hear them in the comments section. Um, I highly recommend that you watch the movie if you haven't already. Um, and if you have, maybe even watch it again because it's really cool to see this kind of thing actually played out in a story rather than just kind of hearing principles like I'm telling you here. But if you can watch it in the story and then identify the principles and then apply that to your own life, I promise you, you're going to see major rewards from that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please hit the thumbs up, um, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my, my new videos first. Share this video if you think it would be helpful to somebody else. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'd also really enjoy this video as well.